Okay, what we have here is the pose for the carcass, or I should say the pose for the mount, as exhibited here by the carcass. Be looking down more. Actually, she should be like this and looking down more. Head out and down. Mouth opened. It's kind of hard to pose with these, these bones. They're kind of a wreck. But you get the idea. You get the idea. He's walking up a little hillock. And there's a little drop off and down here at this portion will be a little red squirrel yuck, 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 yuck. barking at her. And there we have it. What I've got here is the uh, the first fox and her carcass. Uh, you can see what I did to uh, keep the bones intact. I actually splinted them uh, with little uh, popsicle stick type of uh, craft sticks and wrapped them with uh, masking tape. Uh, I had to do this on the three legs that were most severely broken and I was at least able to freeze her in position. Uh, this fox is a little, a little larger than the second one. Uh, she's big in here. I just hope when I, uh, when I got this carcass, I don't find any little puppies in there. That'll be too sad. But, uh, yeah, I just pulled her out of the freezer to see how she froze. And this leg here dropped down a little bit. So before I can do anything, I had wires under the elbow. I'm going to have to thaw this a bit and raise this and refreeze it again. Uh, you can see the body shifted forward here and the shoulder blade has risen on the leg that's uh, on the leg that's lift the foreleg that's lifted back here it looks pretty good uh, I'm just gonna wrap the plastic on it and put it back in the freezer for now until I get around to uh, detaching the legs and uh, making molds but no these leg bones will not be able to be utilized in the sculpture itself it's really that bad so that's that
Okay, I got the full set of facial measurements here. These are all done in millimeters. Uh, the nose to eye was done in millimeters and inches. Her nose to eye is two and five sixteenths. I also recorded a weight, 8.84 pounds. Um, lots of measurements. Now, what I want to record here, there are some dimensions that's that are shown required and on this chart, I don't know how well it's showing up, but I want to go between the shoulder blades. I want to get a measurement between the shoulder blades. I want to get a measurement the width of the hips, the depth of the meat through uh, to the uh, head of the, uh, the femur. And there's a few other width measurements I want to get on this animal. And I'm going to do it while the skin is still pretty much holding everything together. Now to get, be to get the, between the shoulders, what I've done is I have tucked its legs under it like so, under the fox like so, so that it's leaning on its elbows basically. Could not do this with the other carcass. Could not. It would not allow me to, to do that. Now, I want to put them in a position to where they would be when they're standing, the shoulder blades. I'm going to get in between them. I'm going to reverse the, the, uh, the blades on my calipers. And I'm going to get in between, like so. First thing is I want to make sure that the head is sitting level, straight, okay, and that the neck is straight. Then I'm going to get in between the shoulder blades with, with, the, uh, with the blades of my calipers. Usually you measure this way. To do these kind of measurements, these interior measurements, you can cross them. I'm going to kind of hold the legs to the body on either side while I get in between with this and measure, measure the shoulder width. And this is being done in millimeters because this is for sculpting purposes. Put it down on my millimeter ruler and I get... 21. So I get a measurement of 21 millimeter between the shoulders. I just simply mark 21. I don't have to do the double M because I know everything on here is in millimeters. Uh, now, in order to get the hips, I need to skin down past the hips a little more. What I want to do is I do want to get the Shoulder width. I want to get the shoulder width. So I'm going to push in like this a little. Now I'm going to go from the outside and I want to get the shoulder width like so. I have to lift, lift her up here a little bit. I want to lift her body. I want her legs to drop down a bit. And down you go. I want her legs to drop down a bit. And I want to get shoulder width. There we go. Measure this, and I get 69. Shoulder width is 69 millimeters. Neck width. Okay, I'm going to have to skin around the neck more to get the width on the neck. Chest width. It shows where I need to record that on the chest. Okay, and that would be right here. Like so. And on that, I have 67, or well, closer to 68. So I'm going to mark 68 on that. Nope, 67. Check two or three times, record it once. <laughs> uh, end of the ribs width, the width at the end of the ribs. Now, the nice thing about this is that the skin is really helping to hold the carcass together. So at the end of the ribs, where the body flares out just a bit, I have now got 90 at the end of the ribs. I marked that on my chart. 90 millimeter. The belly width. The belly width. I've gone down enough the side of the belly to record the width on the belly. I've gone down enough, here over the end of the ribs, I've gone down enough to get the belly width. And I'm going to do that. I'm not going to push in too much, you could just collapse it under the, uh, 
the points of the caliper is that I got 73. 73. And I say the rest of the the rest of the widths I'll get after the skin is fully removed and then the rest of the body measurements will be taken as well. I think I will get the head length while it's still unskinned. I need to get the head length. There are several measurements here on the head I need to get that are not recorded on the uh, on the head measurement chart. They're not recorded here, but they do show up here. And that's the length of the head and a few other smaller measurements, but important when you're sculpting. All right, I'm going to use this uh, measurement chart made for canines. This was made by Forrest Hart years ago. Um, it was available on the back of his 1988 taxidermy supply catalog. Uh, Toby is a very, very talented sculptor. He was a damn fine taxidermist too in his day. Um, so I'm going to use his chart only because it has everything that you need. And uh, no sense drawing up another one. We have something this grand to go by. Uh, there's going to be a lot of um, width and depth uh, through the animal um, at, at several locations, a lot of distances to be covered. So with that, I'm going to get started. Now what I did yesterday was I wrapped her in plastic and put her in my shop fridge overnight. This way the, uh, none of the features would dry out, and lo and behold, they actually got a little moist, which is very, very nice, especially when you want to measure or you want to make a contact sketch, and I'm going to do both with this carcass. So I pull it out of the plastic and get started with the measurements. Now what I've got here, I've got the fox posed basically in the uh, position it's gonna, that I'm looking to create the, um, the sculpt, the clay uh, sculpt for the mannequin, where it's going to be walking up a little, a little upgrade the mouth open, the tongue will be out just a bit, she'll be panting, looking down inquisitively at a little red squirrel. Uh, this, is the, uh, this is the leg positions. Now, during the skinning on this little one here, I did find a little broken bone just in the wrist area here. But compared to the other one, which was broken everywhere, I mean compound fractures everywhere, to the point where they stabbed, the, the, the exposed bones stabbed me in the hands. Um, this, this was pretty good. This is pretty good. In fact, this is real, real fine. So I'm just going to put it in a relaxed pose. I know it's, it's dead. It's, it's relaxed. But I'm just going to uh, situate it so that I can start taking some measurements. And the first measurement I want to take, now this, this measurement chart, what's nice about it, I took the thicknesses through the shoulder and ribs and whatnot and the belly. It now lets me check the neck depth. Now the depth goes from, let's just elevate this head a little bit here so that the neck straightens up some and just, I get a truer, I get a truer measurement with the head elevated like so. There we are. Now, the depth measurement behind at the, behind the, right behind the skull comes in at, I have my little measurement my measurement. I have my stainless steel rule here in millimeters and inches. I'm going to do these all in millimeters. So what I've got here, right now it's at 54, and I think to compensate for the depth, I'm going to make it, the, you know, the, the, the plumpness you lose in, in depth, I'm going to make that 55 on the depth. So that's 55 millimeter deep. Now the circle on this chart, there's a little circle. There's a circle right here. And you can see that in the neck, right below the 55, there's a circle. And that is for circle equals circumference. The triangular marks are the thickness of fat and meat over the bone. Those will be taken later. But for now, we go back to 
I'm going to take another depth measurement through the neck as indicated on the chart neck depth just ahead of the shoulders so I'm going to widen the calipers I'm going to go down I'm going to record the depth of the neck through the shoulders check it against my ruler again 74 I'm going to compensate for the depth I'm going to make it 75 and that that seems to be correct in what I've done in the past in that it the flow is equal all the way down where it's 55 up here 75 down here the next measurement I, I want to record and the head is in basically a, a standing position which is fine I want to record middle of the shoulder blades to the back of the skull now this is tough to do over the over the skin over the hair uh, it's, it's really it's hard to find these things but here's between the shoulder middle of the shoulder blades to the back I'm going to use a little different um, I'm going to use I'm going to utilize a different um, calipers let's see what I've got here here this one here will do okay and this one here is is a little has a little more uh, roundness I guess you'd say or that the the points come a little further in actually better than this might be a wing calipers it takes a little more to use one of these you have to be a little more makes you it makes you be a little more precise we found the center of the between the shoulder blades I'm going to go right to the back of the skull right here and I'm going to lock this in position let's make sure it's in the right spot we're going between the shoulder blades we'll go a little more all right there we go that measurement works out to 130. 130. 130. Now, if you choose to use a tape measure, all right, you can do that also. The measurements may differ somewhat slightly. What? No, oh, I've got 130 on here. We've got 130 right there. That's 130. Okay. Didn't didn't uh, didn't uh, change the measurement a whole heck of a lot. Now, the next measurement, I'm going to go ahead and take circumference. Remember, the little circle was indicative of the circumference. So I'm going to use the side that shows both millimeter and inches. I'm going to take it first where I took my first depth measurement and I've got seven seven and make sure that's correct on both sides here oops seven okay seven inch circumference And in millimeters, let me check real quick. You go by in, you use inches to indicate when you're ordering a mannequin, so I will record it in inches as well as it's one seventy six. One seventy six. Seven inches and 176 millimeter. I'm recording it in both inches, like I say, inches for the market. So if you want to order one, you know what, your, you know what size neck you'll need. And in millimeters, so that is essentially useless. <laughs> but this way I'll, I'll know 
if I'm uniform all the way around. Now, of course, you know the next shape, the next shape is not round, truly. It's more of an oval shape with the widest part being at the top. It narrows down at the front where the throat is indicated, and you can see the throat there indicated. This carcass is really beautiful. It's in terrific shape. And you can see, as you can see right here, you can see right there what a beautiful, beautiful carcass this is. She also had uh, a little run in with porcupine. I, this is like the third porcupine quill I have pulled out of this little girl's carcass. She must have been a real hell of a fighter, a real little tomboy. But uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the circumference down here now at the base of the neck. And the base of the neck will be found where the torso begins. That's where your base of the neck will be located. All right, I have 8 and 1 16th inches. Eight and one sixteenth inches, and I have twenty-five. All right, so that's eight and one sixteenth inches. One sixteenth inches, and twenty-five millimeter in its circumference. Now I need to get the width of the neck the width of the neck at the base of the skull and again down here. So I'm going to reposition the carcass just for that. Okay, I'm now going to record the width through, width through the neck right here. And this is basically at the atlas joint, the widest part of the neck. That's there and now I'm going to check it against my rule here and compensate on death. We've got 45. It's like 44 and a half, so it's 45 will be the neck width at the base of the skull. 45 millimeter. Down where the neck meets the body. At the base of, I should say, the base of the neck. Yeah, where it meets the torso. We'll take that measurement. And it's 50. 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50. Okay. Now, the skull width. Uh, this can be recorded at either the zygomatic arch or you could record, you could, you could and I do record the meat of the head here the temporalis muscles. I'd like to record that right about here, which puts me at the halfway, or the midway point of the meat. I know it curves around. And that measurement, I'll mark that on, that is at 60. And I'm simply gonna mark that, I'm gonna mark on my measurement chart, and I said that was 60. And this is the temp, temporalis muscles. Now the width of the skull, the widest point of widest part of the skull, 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 will be here along the cheekbones. And for that, I'm going to go, I'm going to get 67, 67. And that makes sense. It's wider than the temporalis muscle, 67. All right. Let me check something here on the face real quick. I believe... Hmm. I didn't record that. That's not required here. I'm going to put a... I'm going to put a circle on the head. I'm going to put a circle on the head diagram. That's going to place, it's going to put me, give me a measurement 
on the masseter muscles. So I'm going to put a circle right here, and I'm going to record that on the fox's skull. And that is the width of the cheeks of the masseter muscles. And I'm going to do that right now. Well, it's in this position. It's in this prone position. And realizing and compensating for the fact that they are somewhat sunken due to death, I'm not going to squeeze too hard on the, uh, on the meat. And I'm going to record this measurement as... I've got 60 on those cheeks. Chubby cheeks, 60. 60. 60. It's very easy to overlook a little something here or there. It really is. And just for the halibut, yes, I said it. There's something fishy about what I say. I'm going to include a circle here, and I'm going to record the temporalis muscles on this at 60, the way they are on the main chart. So we're good there. Now, I'm going to continue this, this type of thing all the way down on this little lady. Uh, other measurements for me to take are, well, there's a line here that goes from the crest of the shoulder blade to the rear of the shoulder blade, the, the scapula. And make sure that that's being recorded here on camera. Yeah. It goes from here to here. Okay, so I set the calipers and like so. I get my get my rule. That comes out to 53, 53 on that measurement recorded on the chart. And then we go from that same point at the back that same point back here to the point of the shoulder, what's, called, what's known as the point of the shoulder, or the head of the humerus, right here, like so. Okay? And that is 85. 85. And this goes on all the way through, all the way down the length and breadth of the fox's body. I've just recorded the depth at the chest here, the end of the ribs here, and the belly here, which is, you will see the depth from the back at the end of the rib, at the last rib, to the belly is larger than this measurement here. There's a very important measurement to be taken next. I'll There's an important is. measurement that must not be overlooked. That measurement is located between the rear thighs, the rear hind legs, I should say. And that measurement is here. I'll move my coffee out of the way so I don't knock it over. <laughs> but right here, this is an exceptionally important measurement to take. It's where, the, it's where the, the abdomen comes up and meets at the back of the ischium, which is the rear of the, of the pelvis. So we want to take, we want to go just, and the, the, way, the, the place you mark, when you figure it, it's located, is right at the center of the hip socket. So with that, I'm going to lift the hind leg out of the way, go under, and Get that measurement, work the cal calibers out carefully. This is the distance under the hind leg at the rear of the body. Whoops. Don't fall down, go boom. And that is at 60. So that measurement is 60. 60 millimeter. Okay. That's a very important, that's a very important measurement in the overall scheme of things. Okay, now, there are folks, I'm sure, watching this who are thinking, well, I'm not looking to sculpt my own mannequin in clay or, or make a carcass 
uh, carcass, a mold of the carcass, and then press clay into it, and then refine it, and then mold it, you know, into into a multi-part uh, mold to make a, a form for the market. How does this benefit me? Very simple. Knowing these measurements will help you, whether you're sculpting in clay, wrapping your body with just straight excelsior. You need to know the dimensions and you need to know the shapes. Okay. Also, when I first mounted my first gray fox. I used a centerboard method, and it was a method that was in one of Leon Prey's books, well, his, his book, Taxidermy, and he showed making a, center, a centerboard out of a piece of pine, and just shape it, roughly shape it, make it a little smaller than the actual dimensions of the carcass, and for that, you aid yourself in that with a contact sketch of the carcass, a carcass tracing, okay? You can put the legs in straight, straight pose the way it's going to be, or you can, you can pose them in the pose that you want the mount in. Uh, I happen to do both. But you can cut the centerboard and then use the dimensions to wrap your excelsior on either side of the centerboard, wire your leg bones to the, to the centerboard to use in the mount, or simply use the legs, you keep the legs frozen until you mount the thing up and you could wrap your wire, I would use, I would double wire, I would shape like the, the scapular and then I would double wire for the humerus and double wire for the radius and ulna and so that you have good strong, uh, good strong uh, foundation for your excelsior to wrap around this and then you could mount your fox the, uh, the old school way. Like I say for me this is going to become a sculpture. So I'm taking all these measurements because it's something I'm accustomed to doing. Okay, I'm accustomed to doing that. So uh, I'm going to take another measurement here on camera. It is a measurement on the chart that indicates the length from the point of the shoulder to the head of the femur in the center of the, the hind leg the center ball socket of the femur, point of shoulder to back here. And for that, I think I'm going to use a straight edge. I go from the point of the shoulder here, all right. Now you see what happens with a ruler, okay, I'm just showing you this how the ruler can move. Now I'm getting 340 on that. I also have a large dropping shit left and right. I also have a large calipers for doing life-size work. That's 340 or 34 centimeters. But I'm going to take this, I'm going to place it on the center of the hip socket come down to the point of the shoulders here. Now lay this onto the ruler. And it looks like 340 is correct. So that is 340 millimeters. All right. Let's see. Now I have to take some other through dimensions this way. I've taken depth. I've taken the chest width, the belly width, and the uh, last rib width while the skin was holding the, the carcass intact. Now it's time to start measuring the legs then flipping it back on its tummy and taking some other depth measurements through the hips, the tail base and whatnot. Okay, there's a couple of more, there's a couple more, uh, a couple more real important measurements to take, especially when you're sculpting or wrapping a body, it doesn't matter. Um, the last measurement of the point of the shoulder to the uh, point of the hip socket the head of the femur is important for the reason, uh, the reason that that's important is it lets you know where 
to set your legs when you're wrapping your mannequin, that you don't have them too far apart or too close. That's why your animal won't be too close coupled or be stretched out like a, like a sausage. A measurement that needs to be taken now is a measurement through the meat to the bone. And we have that, we need that here on the chest. Now I'm just going to fold the leg up and away so you can see what I'm doing. You can use either a sharp pin or in this case I'm going to use the scalpel. I'm going to go in just enough. I'm going to pull back out and this little bit, this little bit here of the scalpel blade that's showing, just that little bit right there, that's where you measure. That becomes the thickness of the animal's chest. You then take that little tip measurement, you go onto your ruler, and we see that that is at six millimeters. So the chest meat at the sternum is six millimeters thick. Well, that's one, that's six millimeters thick. That goes in one of those little triangles. Another one to check is the front of the chest, the meat. So for that, again, I go through And you see how much, how much more thickness there is here. Anyway. Okay. Measure that against the ruler, and I get 11. 11. That is 11. There are a couple of other depth through the meat, the same, back at the same place where we measured uh, the rear depth of the body. Uh, an important measurement to take right now, overall with this animal, we want to get the length from the jaw to the shoulder. That's the back of the jaw to the point of the shoulder. And that's indicated on the chart. We put the leg in a standing pose, standing position, like so. And it's just a simple matter of reversing the uh, crossing the bars on the calipers and going from the point of the shoulder to the back of the jaw. Okay. Now we go. We get 95. We get 95. That's a good standard measurement. If you maintain that 95, you can, it will be the same when the head's turned or it's straight ahead or even when it's down. That doesn't really change. It's not that the, it's not, the, remember, it's not that the carcass stretches when it moves. It does reposition, it does redistribute the muscle, but it doesn't stretch out of, out of whack or anything. And that is for that. That's how you get your depth through the meat to bone measurements. Now I'm going to take the rear thigh measurement. I'm going to take the depth right here, right at the largest point, from front to back. 81. Also, I want you to notice something. I want you to take notice the profile back here. How relatively straight the thigh muscles are. Okay, too many times a sculptor will bow these muscles out. Animals are not bodybuilders, okay? An animal sculpted in a walking pose, a simple walking pose or standing pose, 
is not going to have a great bulging muscle back here, okay? Uh, too many, there are too many mannequins on the market, especially in the, in the cats. It's one thing I've become fairly expert on, that's the cats. Canines are pretty, are pretty much straightforward the same, all right? And one thing I've learned back here, the rear of the thigh muscles, it's fairly straight. Now, the next one to take is from the knee to the juncture where the thigh meets the back of the calf, like so. That's the first one. That is 65. The second one is the top of the tibia, the head of the tibia, to the same place, rear of the thigh. So that's 65 and 50. So we have 65 at that top measurement and 50 on the second measurement. Next you take the depth through these areas. The depth of the thigh muscles. Now this you want to be well aware of because you, you want to make sure you're not squishing into the bone. Now you have to use just a good slight sense of feel here. It's not very wide. They're not very wide. It's not very wide at all. On the upper thigh, we've got 25 is the width. 25 is the width. I call front to back the depth, side to side is the width. Now over here, I'm going to put my finger underneath and hold this flat and get that dimension through here. And down here we've got 22, 22. And that was the measurement that was taken from the kneecap from the patella to the back of the calf and thigh meeting place. And then from the head of the tibia to the rear of the thigh meeting place, That will be a little smaller. That's 21. So we have 25, 22, 21. Now these kind of measurements continue on down the legs. An important measurement to take is the measurement of the Achilles, the Achilles heel. Not so much the, the tendon itself, but the little V that is created here. You can do it through the fur on the animal. I prefer here because I'm sculpting this area. I'm going from the, the head of the tarsal bone here to the meeting place where the tendon and the calf muscles converge. So I'm taking that measurement measuring it out on my rule and I'm getting 30 what is that 37 38 37 that is 37 okay there's a couple more measurements to get as I did on the front feet we have to go through at the heel here, and then we have to go through here, and then the width on that hind foot. And those are two more measurements to take. I'll do them off camera. You really don't need to see. It's like like watching okay. paint dry. A couple of last measurements I took was the width of the tail at the base and the depth. I also added to this measurement chart. I added the width of the lumbar region right here, A.K.A the back strap, okay? Um, at this point, I think we have a, a complete set. The only thing I need to do is take circumference of the body at certain places, uh, at the chest, end of the ribs, and around the belly. 
I take those three circumference measurements, then this set of measurements is complete. And we're done. Okay, here's the measurement chart in full. A couple of minor measurements to take, and that would be the meat through the shoulder and through the hips. Other than that, this is a complete set of measurements for doing up clay sculpture. Now, what I will do, as I'm going to do with the first carcass, that's going to have a mold made of it, and uh, then the legs will be cut off of the, uh, the carcass and have molds made for them. Now, the first, the first fox, the problem with the legs on the first fox is the multiple broken bones are not going to allow me to use those leg bones. So the clay with some in inserted wire for uh, strength and support or maybe some dowel rods uh, will be what's used in the clay sculpture. The second fox here, the one that we've been working on here, measuring, that will also have a carcass cast, a uh, 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 carcass mold and a carcass um, uh, pressed clay in, in the carcass, a reproduction. Uh, but I will also, and I will also make molds of the legs after they're removed from the body. Um, but then I will strip the meat off those bones, rub the bones down with borax real well, lightly boil them. I'm not, I'm not going to have them come apart at the ligaments. I want the ligaments to hold on. I just want to get the grease and meat out of the bones. Um, the little wrist that's shattered from some shot, I think that'll be okay. I'll be able to put that back together. Um, uh, and and that, will, that will go up um, completely stock. In other words, that'll be a complete skeleton over a centerboard and uh, a clay model will be born of that. But that's where we're at. We now have a complete set of measurements for the second gray fox, the body, the head, the first gray fox has a complete set of measurements, the head, the body, um, all this. They really line up pretty closely. Uh, there's minor differences in, in the head and whatnot, just maybe uh, several short millimeters, two or three millimeters here or there. But it shows that you can take a fox and mount it over a good standard mannequin that's done from a good clay sculpture and that's what I'm looking to produce a good clay sculpture one that's accurate one that's pleasing to look at and not one that puts the animal in a, in a ridiculous ass pose so until we meet again see ya